All righty, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get started. All right. Got some people coming in here. So the first thing that we're going to do <clears throat> is a screen share. Open this up. And we're going to go to Wayne's Lock Shop. Okay. Um, the reason that these meetings are going to um, really start taking off and we're going to put, I'm going to devote some more time and effort to them is um, we're going to try and do some sponsorship on them as well. And that way we're going to have more content and more good stuff to give everybody else. So if we can if we can get some sponsorship behind it, then we can have more assets, more tools, more uh products to demo cuz really I just kind of go with what I what I encounter and run across. Um the content of these meetings really comes from what I do almost every single week. Uh so for this one here, Kedex is one of our sponsors. They're a sponsor of Wayne's Lock Shop and if you're not familiar with Kedex products, you really should be. They make the little Swiss Army knife of uh, change key tools for safe locks, uh, the little KD14, I believe it is. And they also make um, a lot of other tools that really help out too. They actually make metal posts for uh, flush bolts uh, indoors. They They make a ton of different products and things. And we don't have time to go into all of them right now. Um, this may take us over to Kedex here, and we can take a quick little look and see what they have to offer as far as products, um, door products and whatnot here. But um, got armored door loops, hardened cylinder ring guards. If you're going to upgrade to high security locks, it would be a really good idea to add one of these. I just figure that we include them on the package deal. Uh, I won't put a high security lock on and not put one of these hardened rings on. It's a waste of time and money, in my personal opinion. Um, you got offset style guards. There's just a lot of really cool products that Kedex offers. Here's that security bolt-in guide. So we've all replaced flush bolts before on aluminum storefront doors, the stationary side. Uh, they're little pieces of plastic, and those pieces of plastic break. So a great alternative is going to be this metal kit. It gives you a metal guide and a metal rod here as well. Uh, looks like they got some under the door tools and a bunch of other stuff in here. Spacing rings, wave washers, uh, anything storefront or locksmith related. Kedex is going to have a ludicrous amount of options for you. So just want to go ahead and really shout out Kedex and uh I like to support local or, you know, smaller companies that uh, provide great products for locksmiths. And that's exactly what they do. Um, so we, I really enjoy being able to support Kedex like that. Uh, as far as what we're going to cover today, today is going to be, let's see here, general locksmithing. We're at, we actually have a really cool product called the profile front follow uh profile cylinder front follow follower servicing cradle kind of a mouthful there but um we'll just go through some of these here and we'll show you how this thing works so the first thing that we do is we've all had to rekey a profile cylinder or at least i would think we all have had to do that from time to time uh any kind of hoppy multi-point door, GU, uh, any kind of Euro style door, you're gonna have these kind of locks. Um, and some of them may have a little pin and a spring here that actually has a secondary indent on the thumb turn side. So when we're servicing these, even just to get them out of the door, you're gonna need some previous or prior knowledge about the device. And the way that you can tell is on the thumb turn side, if you see there's a little line right underneath there, kind of in line with the Bible, uh, there's a good chance that there's going to be a detent or a check spring in there, a check pin. And you're going to have to reach in there with a dental tool, a lock pick or something very thin, pull it down, 
and it's going to allow you to rotate the cylinder fully so that you can then pull it out of the door and service it. Now, once we service it, uh, you may or may not have these Allen heads here or a plastic cap. Uh, it may be serviceable. It may not be serviceable. We don't know. Um, yeah. We don't know until we open it up and we see what we have there, you know, to, to deal with. Um, this being a profile cylinder, it could be a weird keyway. It could be, you know, I've seen Australian uh, profile cylinders with Australian keyways. There's all kinds of different stuff, Italian, German, all kinds of different profile cylinders with different keyways. And what this tool allows you to do is it gives you an additional option to be able to service these if you do not have the caps. Now, a couple other things that can happen. These caps can become seized. You get a lot of weather. This is going to be right outside where you're going to have that hot and cold, right? These are probably made out of some kind of steel. Sometimes they're stainless steel. Sometimes they're just regular steel and they rust in there. Um, you could just have a bunch of things happen. They could be stripped. They could be missing. You can have a lot of things happen. The other thing is, is on those plastic caps, those plastic caps break all the time. So you might not even want to pull those out to rekey it from the top. You might want to use this particular product to um, service it from the beginning. So once we have our pro profile cylinder out, it's now in a position where we can begin servicing it. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pry off this little clip right here, this little clip thing. And this clip is going to actually be what holds on to the back of the plug and allows it to come out. Now, there are some, some other kits out there that allow you to completely disassemble and you pull this little lobe and everything out. And they're basically like little followers sliced into pieces. And you would then pull all of this out. I'm going to actually go back one sec right here, just so we can see. You would pull this lobe and all of this stuff out, and you would then follow, slide your follower and push it over, and slide your follower and push it over, and keep pushing the plug out. That's, that would be one way to do it. That's doing it from the middle or from the back side. Um, but once we take that clip off, here's a clip right in hand, like so. Don't lose it. Uh, when you take these things out, they tend to fly and ping and disappear. It's a pretty specialized clip, so I would not recommend losing that. I'd recommend that you either have some extra ones on the truck. Notice my hand here is pretty much right here because I saw him uh, when we were doing this demonstration. He's push, push, push. You know, he's pushing it and angling it towards the mat, but it can actually bounce up off of that. So I'm kind of putting my hand here to help guide and catch that to make sure it doesn't disappear into the abyss. Now, once we have that clip completely off, we can then put it into this cradle. And this cradle was developed by John Nolan and Andrew Taylor. Um, I don't know who does what part of the design on that, but they worked on it together. And uh, if you ask them, they can tell you who gets what credit for what por portion of it. Um, but the main idea is, is that it's a 3D printed cradle. And it has a slot for the screw to go right in here. And what it's going to allow you to do is it's going to create a holding uh, cradle so that we can have this little hole down here. And we can actually follow this and still keep the top pins in place without coming out. Now, this is going to be fairly non-traditional, meaning we're going to have to pick this lock. You'll notice that we have our leashy tool over here. You're going to have to pick the lock. And we need the bottom of the keyway to come around and come up right here towards this side. And when that happens, what we can go ahead and do is, I'm just taking some extra pictures of the, the side and whatnot here. Um, what happens when we do that, actually, I meant to bring this to go live. Give me one second. This out of here. That go live for a second. <clears throat> we'll jump right back into this in just a minute. Got too excited and want to jump into the meat and potatoes. Okay. 
Come on. Perfect. Okay. So now back to our profile cylinder. We're just going to take a couple of extra pictures all the way around so you can see and get a real good idea of what it looks like from all sides. Okay. We've got another set screw for the thumb turn over here, but we're not worried about that right now. Just sitting in the cradle. Now we can apply the screw. Now, I don't believe there's any threads in the actual cradle itself. It's plastic. They could strip out anyways. The threads are actually in the profile cylinder. So you're literally just putting the screw in there so it can't flop around or move around. Um, you can imagine just having that wire tucking in and holding those top pins in place. If the cylinder were to move, obviously the cylinder would explode and then it'd be a nightmare trying to put that together because you'd have to follow it from the front and try and put pins in. It, it would be a cat catastrophe. You would not want to have to deal with that. Okay. So just go ahead and insert the screw. You don't have to tighten it all the way down. It's just there to keep it from moving back and forth. You can tighten it down if you want to, if it makes you feel better. But really, just sitting like this is going to be fine. And then here's the screw from the other side. Now, you can see how this wire it needs to fit down into this hole. It's perfectly bent. It's custom bent. This stuff is all pretty much handmade. I mean, the 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 cradle's 3D printed, uh, but it's, this wire's pretty much handmade as well. So it's good quality product. And what we need to have happen is the... Um, oops. The wire's gonna have to slide right down into the bottom of the keyway. And in order to get that to happen, we're gonna have to turn it around. Looks like John's given us some information as well. I'm gonna go ahead and check the comments. Uh, lucky when the screw is there to rekey. Yes, it is. Uh, worst case, drill and tap, use Medico screw cover. Uh, you could do that as well. Uh, Andrew Taylor created the device and John manufactures them. So there you go. It's Andrew Taylor's concept, idea, brainchild. And John is really good with um, 3D printing and designing those and getting all the measurements and, and all that stuff. And so that's how that's working. So here you can see, you can begin to see how this is going to work. This wire is going to slide into this hole. And then the plug is actually going to come out and the wire is going to be what holds the top pins in place. You can see now we've got the lock in the pick position and the open part of the keyway is now facing this down portion towards this wire. Now we've got the ability to slide that wire down in there and actually hold those top pins up. Easiest way to pick these for me is going to be the Schlage SC1. Uh, if it's a five pin or SC4, if it's a six pin, usually they're five pin. He's more residential, okay? Um, just pop your uh, leashy tool in there. Be careful. Almost every single profile cylinder that I have run into has spool pins. Yeah, it has a lot of spool pins in it. And it's not just one. There's usually a couple, and they're pretty nasty. Your, your old uh, profile cylinders are a nasty pick. And even if you get them picked, if you don't have a leashy tool or something in there that actually provides the tip of the keyway, you're not going to be able to actually open that lock because it doesn't engage with the back of the lock unless you actually have the key blank inserted in there. So now we've got the lock picked and you can see this little springy piece right here. This is what the tip engages with. And that's what engages with that lobe that actually actuates the lock cylinder and the, um, the um, cassette or the multi-point cassette that it goes inside of. So you can see those top pins sitting right in there. And then we've got this wire that runs right in the top there and holds everything in place. A little bit closer picture of that right here. Okay. Just so you can see it, everything nice and close, up close and personal. We try and make sure... Um, Try and make sure that we document everything as closely and well as possible. Then we'll go ahead and rekey the cylinder, put in your pins, whatever you're going to do. This one was strictly for demonstration purposes. This tool was so cool that when I first got it, I most definitely wanted to put it to use. 
uh, right in the field as soon as as soon as we could get a chance to do so. Uh, and Josh, who is one of my technicians, who's my lead technician, actually really enjoys Euro profile cylinders and enjoys replacing the cassettes on multi-point hardware and enjoys the um, mortise body locks. So this was right up his alley. He he actually found this to be extremely useful. So here you go. You just put your pins back in, rekey it to whatever you need to rekey it to. Pop all those pins directly into the plug itself. Double check the key. Make sure that everything is nice and flat and flush and ready to go. You can see we got a couple different angles here. Everything looks really nice and ready to go back in. You can see this little portion right here. This little crease in the plug of the cylinder. This is where that E-clip goes or that C-clip. C-clip, E-clip. It does have a little portion in the back of it, so it could be considered an E-clip. Some people call them C-clips. doesn't really matter, but it goes right here, and that's what retains this and keeps it from falling out. Okay, So everything's looking really nice and flat in there. I kind of look at it from the side to see if anything's looking real high or riding real low. This looks absolutely perfect, ready to go back and uh, go from there. Now, obviously, you can see the key, the shoulder of the key moved out a little bit. So these are sticking up just a little bit right here. But um, this has been rekeyed properly and everything looks really good. Okay, now we're getting ready to insert everything back into the profile cylinder. Just a couple more pictures of watching how that um, piece of metal actually holds all those top pins up in there. And one of the key factors is going to be making sure that this piece is aligned correctly. I just push on that with the screwdriver to make sure that it's going to slide in exactly where it needs to go. If it's not aligned properly, as you try and put the plug in, it's not going to work. It's going to get stuck. And here's Josh pushing that plug right back into the cylinder like so. Everything's still locked in with the screw. Now, I can't remember exactly which photo this was. I think this might still be sticking out just a little bit. I think the face of the plug is actually supposed to be lined up directly with the face of the housing. Um, but that's to be determined. We'll see how that works here in just a second. Um, making sure that everything is seated correctly. And you'll know everything's fitting correctly because when you turn that cylinder, it'll interact with the top pins. OK, they'll fire off and they'll go into their location. If you're not in all the way, um, it's not going to you won't those top pins won't go where they need to go. They'll be sitting on a bridge, if you will. Then we just pull the uh, set screw on the side out. Just like so. And voila, I think we've got another couple pictures down here. So let's take a look at this. Oh, I think we need to start here. So now he's checking it out, making sure the key works. Left, right, no binding. Everything's nice and smooth, working very nicely. And then you pull the cylinder out, and this is what's left over. This is what the product is. It comes with the cradle, and it comes with this wire that allows you to service just about any profile cylinder. Uh, even if it doesn't have the gaps in the top. Now, there are different sized profile cylinders. So some are longer, some are shorter. I found that this seems to work on most of them. If you get one that's got an offset that's a little bit different, I'm sure John would be able to do the mathematical calculations. And if you were to send one to him um, with different measurements, he'd probably be able to customize something for you. Uh, but that would be between you and him. Uh, on your own accords. But just know that there are options because these things are 3D printable. There are definitely some options there. Uh, so we put together a little video for Locksmith Ledger um, and myself here for Wayne's Lock Shop. So let's just go ahead and see um, if we've got some action on this one. Let's get sound. Where's our sound? This system allows you to rekey a pro three. Good morning and welcome to the Locksmith Ledger. Today we're going to cover the 3D Wolf 
printing profile cylinder front follower system. This system allows you to rekey a profile cylinder from the front by starting off by removing. So somebody asked, Keith Moore asked a really, really good question. And that question was, uh, is that where you use one less number valuation for the pins according to the cuts? And yes, um, most profile cylinders, if you go to rekey them and the key requires a zero, you're not going to be able to make that work. You'll have to use a custom pin because when you install them, if your cuts are 64532, 64532, um, what they're actually, the pins that are actually going to fit in there are going to be one value less. So if it's supposed to be a six, you're going to put a five pin in. That is something that is unique to profile cylinders. And it just has to do with the milling and the size of the plug and the way that those things fit together. Moving this retaining clip like so from your profile cylinder and then inserting it into the profile cradle. After you insert into the profile cradle, you can install this set screw to hold it in place. It is pre-drilled. I apologize. I actually had a different video that I wanted to show. Um, let's see here. That actually had the um <clears throat> actually had here it is. Uh, nope. Oh yes, here it is. This is better. All right, so this is gonna be our profile cylinder. We can service this one from the top, but if you could not, if that was all sealed off, then you would need this tool here. So we're just going to show and demonstrate how this works. I'll put it into. And if you're interested, there's the website right there. Get a hold of John and he can tell you about payment details, shipping, and any of the information you need about the actual product. The cradle, after we pop this clip off and manage not to stab yourself in the finger. Hopefully, carefully prying the retaining clip from the profile cylinder is going to be one of the first steps after you have it secured in the cradle. So then we're going to have to actually insert the screw into the side. So then you can fully seat the screw into the profile cylinder. It uses the threads of the cylinder, not the crate. Then we're going to have to actually pick the lock because we need to get this wire in the bottom of the keyhole. And the keyhole needs to be turned around here because this is going to pretend to be your follower. That's the whole point of the wires. It goes in and it actually holds the top pins where they need to stay. Using your leashy tools is a great way to pick this lock. Usually picks fairly easily. Sometimes there can be spool pins or security pins in there. So you'll need to use those techniques in order to do that. And here's what it looks like. The wire is a follower. Then we can now rekey the cylinder as normal. And I'm just going to go and pins back in it. Since this is for demonstration purposes only, we're just going to put the pins that came out of the cylinder back into it. You can see how the wire keeps the pins in the top of the cylinder or the Bible in place while we do this process. So now you know why if you even if you pick these, you still can't unlock them because you're not the tip of the key engages with that to actually engage the, the lobe. All right, so one thing to keep in mind is that you're going to have to center this piece here with the piece in the back. So you're going to have to manipulate it and turn it just a little bit till it catches properly. Nice. So Jack has brought up a point. Um, why not just file the bottom of the key and turn the key with no picking? That does work. Uh, you are correct. You can do it that way. 
you you absolutely could as long as you can slip that wire in there here's the reason i wanted to show it this way most of the homes that we get profile cylinders are usually on a door that gets forgotten about a lot of other locksmiths you know choose not to integrate those locking systems with the rest of the house because they don't know how to service them or work on them um so a lot of times you're not going to get a key so it's a good idea to know how to pick those so that you can rekey or service them through the picking method now if you are granted a key that's great it'll make your job even easier you do you just slice the bottom of the key off you can use a dremel tool uh, file whatever you choose and then you can as long as you can turn the plug and slip that wire in it will work absolutely no problem great point jack thank you for bringing that up now the reason why that one thought out on me was because i didn't have pressure pushing back on this spring yep there it goes click nice so that's the click that you're looking for. You notice that we didn't have it seated all the way because that spring was pushing out just a little bit on that back detent. Um, but as soon as you heard it and we hit it in the correct direction and moved it, roll it over, click, and it clicks into place. And now you can service the cylinder or actually, no, it's all, it's all put back together. You can put the clip back in and continue servicing and you're almost done. See it now? What we see? Now you can see the advantages of the cradle and how it holds the wire in place and how the screw holds it into the cradle, aligning everything properly. We know there's different sizes of profile cylinders. However, this is a general one. Voila. Beautiful. We have it. All righty. So there you have it. It is just about 4.30. So we're going to wrap this up. I appreciate everybody for joining um, and coming in. These are the locksmith live meeting is only about 30 minutes or so. Um, our next meeting in about 30 minutes at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. This is the first Monday of the month. So we do have two meetings. This is Locksmith Live, designed to be roughly 30 minutes long or so, and just give you a little bit of a uh, tips and education on what I've done throughout the week. The Locksmith uh, United meeting is going to be about an hour long, and uh, we're going to cover electronic access, uh, installing a double mag lock and touch sense exit device bars on an opening that currently had something like an alarm lock uh, deadbolt or something like that on there. So we're going to go into fairly significant detail. We'll have quite a few photos and quite a few things to go over. Uh, door deletion kit from GKL products, how to make the door look pretty when we're done after we get that alarm lock off of there. Touch sense exit device bars, no moving parts um, to those uh, and how to actually install them, mount them, et cetera, and installing a mag lock how to cut out the uh, door stop at the top of the door and how to integrate that in with a door operator as well. So we'll be going over that. Go ahead and look for the Locksmiths United meeting. I will put um, Jim Billings. I, do, I don't have it handy right here where I can put it in this. Uh, it'll, I'll, it'll be in Locksmith Nation. Let me see if I can grab it real quick. Does anybody have any questions about the profile cylinder front follower cradle at this time? Does anybody have any questions about that? How to use it? Any other questions about that? Okay. Let me see if I can grab this meeting for you and I'll put it up on here. Copy. And then I'm just going to go ahead and post this in Nation right now. So it'll be in Locksmith Nation and I will post it right here. Go ahead. Well, hang on. You're going to get your pill right now. Nope. Uh -oh. uh, you know, I don't want to hear your ball. Mm -hmm. There we go. 
All right, give me just one sec and let's see if we can go to. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Perfect. All right. So this will be the meeting for the next one coming up here in just about 30 minutes. All right. I'm going to post that there. I'll give everybody a second to copy and paste it or grab it. And we'll go from there. Thanks for joining, everybody. I appreciate it. Um, we'll see you next Monday. And hopefully, if we can get some sponsorship and get some traction, we can really have a lot more uh, assets to be able to cover more things, more tools, more products, more projects. And I can go ahead and do some of that testing to find out, hey, this really works or this doesn't really work. You just never know. And that's what I like to do. I, I hope these aren't seen as sales pitches. I'm just saying, hey, this is a product that I actually tried. I used it and it worked really well. Or here's a project that we did. And based off of the project, I'm going to do the project no matter what. I'm going to show you the things that we use and the way that we do it. And if that helps you, great. If you have a different way, that's okay too. Okay. So thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and end this meeting here now. And we'll see you in about 30 minutes for the Locksmiths United meeting. Thanks and have a great day. Appreciate everybody's participation.